In this video, we're going to look at net ionic equations and specifically spectator ions. So by the end of the video, you'll understand how to do net ionic equations, but you'll really understand these spectator ions, their role in the equations, and really what's happening chemically. So we'll start with a common net ionic equation, silver nitrate and sodium chloride. So here is our silver nitrate, AgNO3, and our sodium chloride, NaCl. Silver nitrate, that's a crystal. It actually looks like a powder here, a white powder. And then sodium chloride, we have these salt crystals here, table salt. But for net ionic equations, they take place in solution, in aqueous solutions. So we need to dissolve these in water for any reaction to take place. So let's do that. So here we're putting NaCl into the water. It'll dissolve or dissociate into its ions. So it goes in the water and it breaks down into the Na plus and the Cl minus ions. So these ions are part of our net ionic equation. Likewise, we can add water to the AgNO3, and that'll dissolve and break apart into Ag plus and then the NO3 minus ions. So back to our net ionic equation here. We said Ag plus NO3 minus sodium was a plus and chlorine was a minus. And you can look these up on the periodic tables. And then for things like these polyatomic ions, you need to look those up on a chart or have memorized that NO3 minus the nitrate ion has a one minus charge. We have our charges, and we said they're dissolved now. So we can put a little AQ for aqueous after each one. And we've got the first part of our equation. In this case, the plus will go with the minus here, and then this plus here will go with this minus. It's a double displacement reaction. That'll give us this. With net ionic equations, you're normally given these. These are going to be aqueous, so the reaction can take place. But you have to figure out whether these will be aqueous, liquids, solids, or gases. The way to do it, we can look up on a chart that AgCl, on a solubility chart, that's going to be insoluble. It's not going to dissolve, so we'll put a solid after that. And then NaNO3, sodium nitrates. Nitrates are usually soluble, or we could look it up. This is going to be aqueous as well, so it's soluble. That means it dissolves, and it's aqueous. So now we know the states for the net ionic equation. If you think about this reaction, when it takes place, what should happen? The sodium nitrate, that's aqueous, so it should stay dissolved. But this solid, that should fall to the bottom of the test tube. That should be a precipitate. And that's important when we're writing net ionic equations. So let's look at the reaction and see that happen. So the test tube, that's the aqueous AgNO3. It's a clear solution. In the beaker, that's the NaCl aqueous solution. So we're going to pour the silver nitrate into the beaker. Watch what happens. So that white cloud, that's the AgCl. That's the silver chloride. And it's actually a solid. It'll fall to the bottom of the beaker in a while and just be a white layer on the bottom. The NaNO3, however, that's still aqueous. It's still dissolved. Those are called spectator ions. So back again to our equation. We saw we had these aqueous solutions. We mixed these together. We got a solid. And then we really didn't see anything happen with the NaNO3 because it's aqueous. It's dissolved. From this, we can write what's called a total ionic equation. We basically just write all of the ions. And then any solid, liquid, or gas, we leave together. We don't break it up. So let's write the total ionic equation. And I won't write the states like aqueous and solid until the end. And here we have AgCl. It's the solid. We don't break that up. It does not dissolve. It does not dissociate into ions. It's just AgCl. So think back to where we started. We have our test tube. We had AgNO3. It was dissolved. So we had these ions in the aqueous solution. And we had our NaCl, which was also aqueous. When we mixed them together, we saw that white precipitate. That was the solid AgCl. And then the NaNO3, that stayed in solution. This is the total ionic equation. And based on this, we can write the net ionic equation. When we write the net ionic equation, we're looking for what changed in the reaction. So if we think about it, we have NO3 here and NO3 here. It didn't change, so we cross that out. We're not worried about that for our net ionic equation. The Na plus and the Na plus, it didn't change. When we look at our test tubes and our beakers, we have Na plus in the test tube, and we have Na plus in the beakers. 
no change. What did change, the Ag+, the silver ion, and the Cl-, the chloride ion, they joined together to form a solid. That's very different. These ions in the water dissolved clear, and then you have this white precipitate. Based on this, we have our net ionic equation, which looks like this. So let's talk about those spectator ions again. These are our spectator ions. They're spectator ions because they just watched. They didn't do anything. They started out as NO3 minus, ended up as NO3 minus. And because of that, they've not changed. So spectator ions, they're involved in the chemical reaction. They were bonded to these chemicals here, but they stay the same at the end as they were at the beginning. Those are spectator ions. So now you should understand net ionic equations and the role of spectator ions. What you need to do at this point is practice. Do a lot of balancing net ionic equations. There's a link in the description and at the end of this video to help you do that. This is Dr. B talking about spectator ions and net ionic equations. Thanks for watching.